So we can see that dung beetles are a pretty good thing um, and if you decide that you want them uh, there are still a number of questions you need to answer before you can go out and get the uh, appropriate dung beetles for your property. You need to decide which season of the year you are planning to introduce dung beetles to your paddocks. Dung beetles introduced to Australia are either winter active or summer active. The summer active beetles need to be introduced to your paddocks in early summer. Similarly, if you're introducing winter active beetles, you need to introduce them at the beginning of winter. We currently have got spring active species which are about to be released and these of course need to be released at the beginning of spring. In the appendix of the reference book, Dung Down Under, regional report cards list dung beetle species and their known and predicted rates of success across southern Australia. A dung beetle supplier should be able to recommend which species for your region and for a particular season of the year. What type of soils do you have? This is a really important question. Dung beetles do very well in friable loam, but they will also prosper in other types of soil. So it's not just the soil type, it's the, the way in which soil interacts with rainfall. So if you get waterlogged soils, uh, commonly they are not very favourable for dung beetles, but some species such as bison uh, need clay in order to breed. Other species uh, have a preference for sandy soils. When introducing dung beetles to your property, you need to think in terms of numbers of head of stock, not so much how much acreage you have. So uh, we recommend that you introduce one starter colony, commonly a thousand beetles, per 50 head of cattle or 500 head of sheep. Uh, it's best to establish the beetles in one paddock first, rather than scatter the beetles over many paddocks across your property. So if you decide to go ahead and uh, get dung beetles for your property, it's best to go to a dung beetle supplier. You'll get a lot of advice from your supplier and they will be able to help you with the selection of which species to use and stocking rates. When you put your order in, the beetles will arrive in a container, probably via express post. It's best to arrange to pick them up from the post office so the beetles are not left in the sun where they heat up and this will kill them. When you receive your beetles, they need either to be released directly into the paddock or if you want to keep them for a while, best put them in the fridge, which cools them down and slows their activity. It is best to release your dung beetles in the center of a paddock or at the junction of a number of paddocks which are going to be occupied by stock. To choose a dung pad into which to put the beetles, kick open the pad with your boot to ensure that it's moist. Don't release dung beetles into old dry pads. Yeah Bernard, it looks like there's quite a fresh pad here. Yeah well that looks pretty good actually. This yeah. is in your bull paddock isn't it? Yeah that's right. Okay Maybe. so it. let's have a look. Oh that's beautiful. Oh look there's some there's some beetles in it already. Yes. But let's, yeah, that's fine. So let's, let's, let's put the beetles in. Once you've chosen a dung pad, put a handful of beetles on the surface of the pad. Do this to perhaps 15 or 20 pads over a quarter of a hectare. When you release dung beetles onto the pad, some will be very still. They'll be playing dead or doggo and may take an hour to become active. Once they're active, they will start burrowing into the dung. There will always be a few dead beetles in each box. Extra beetles are provided to cover that. It doesn't really matter at what time of day you release your beetles, provided you release them onto fresh dung. If you've got moderate numbers of cattle, say 20 or more, then you can release all of your beetles at once. But if you've got small numbers of animals, then it's best to divide the group of beetles that you're going to release into three and release them uh, on successive days or every two days. In between times, you can keep them in the fridge. Of course, when you release your dung beetles, they need to have food. The adults need to have food in order to generate eggs, and the larvae need to have food in order to grow into adults. And so it's really important that you keep cattle, or sheep, or horses, in the vicinity of the release area for eight to 10 weeks following the release of the beetles. The lifespan of adult dung beetles is very variable. Some species, like the summer active beetles, live for only eight to 10 weeks. 
and two or three generations a year. A winter active or spring active beetles can live for many months. Monitoring dung beetle activity will give you an understanding of how well your colony has established. One colony will not be able to colonise every pad produced by a herd of cattle or a mob of sheep, but the original 1,000 beetles could become 500,000 in six years' time. Well, this is one of our two release sites of Vaca, and this pad that's here that's disintegrated was put here four days ago, and the pad nearer to Bernard is, was put here two days ago. In each case, there was five litres of dung. And the, the Vaca, in that last four days, have completely shredded the, the surface of the, of the dung pad. You can monitor pads over a period of time to see the rate of soil disturbance and growth of the grass. Beetle traps will also assist in identifying which dung beetles are colonising your paddocks and assist in estimating dung beetle numbers. Of course it's critical to manage and monitor your dung beetles, but that's not the only problems that you're going to have because there are a number of threats to, to dung beetles such as predators and chemicals. And if you look at the next video, you'll see how you can deal with those problems. And if you would like to have more information, please contact your local natural resources centre.